Hi everyone, I'm John Pavlock and welcome back to Ion Harness Racing. This week, we'll take a look at the Standard Bread Horse Sale, check in with Muscle Hill as he begins a new career, hear from Ohio's horsemen who face another big challenge at the ballot box and look at the final leg of the pacing Triple Crown. Let's start in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania where the Standard Bread Horse Sale is in full swing and from where USTA Advertising Manager Heather Dodds reports. All right, Jim, well, it's the end of the first day. What are your impressions? Well, we were reasonably pleased with the way it came out. We never knew what would happen. What are your ex expectations for the rest of the week? Well, well, we'd like to see it hold up, and uh, I got a feeling that it just might. Products were extremely strong, and Pacers, although not weak, uh, were not near as strong as uh, the Trotters were in relative terms. Give one and get one. Now through December 31st, subscribe to Hoofbeats and you'll receive two subscriptions for the price of one. Perfect for holiday gift giving while still having one of your own to enjoy. Visit shop.ustrotting.com to both give and get. This past Wednesday, horsemen took to the streets surrounding the Ohio State House in an effort to educate voters about how casinos could kill thousands of racing jobs. Steve McCoy is the president of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association and we spoke with him prior to the rally currently employ approximately 16,000 people directly and indirectly. We're a business that contributes between 800 and 900 million estimated to the Ohio economy and a great number of those jobs are also in jeopardy because we expect that if issue three passes at least a majority of the commercial racetracks in Ohio will close which we think will result in a, in a loss of more than half of those 16,000 jobs. So you couple those two things together and issue three in fact will be uh, very detrimental to the Ohio economy, not the bonus that they claim. The final leg of the pacing Triple Crown will go to post this coming Saturday at Yonkers Raceway. The Messenger Stakes drew only seven entrants including the winner of the Breeders' Crown and a Rooney Pace, if I can dream. But the Lady Maud, the Philly version of the Messenger, drew 10, which meant there were two eliminations this past Saturday night. One featured the recent winner of the Breeders' Crown, Yellow Diamond. Perfectionist has come up empty in the race to the wire. Yellow Diamond and Shanghai Lil. Yellow Diamond takes the second elimination of the Lady Maud. As we mentioned, only seven horses entered the Messenger Stakes, meaning no eliminations were needed this past Saturday. We decided to look ahead using speed ratings from Trackmaster to see who might be able to match strides with the likely favorite If I Can Dream. We see that If I Can Dream is a model of consistency with ratings of 97, 97, and 96 in his three most recent starts, and his average speed rating of 87 is best of any horse in the field. Now look at the speed ratings for Double Shot of Scotch. He has improved figures in each of his last three races going from a 90 to a 95 and then a 98. This is a great pattern to look for and could point to a horse that is extremely sharp and ready for another big race. Trackmaster speed ratings are considered official by the U.S. Trotting Association and indispensable by horse players. At Trackmaster, it's all about winning. Powerful handicapping products built on official USTA data help you be the best horse player you can be. And free services such as Statsmaster and the Virtual Stable also put the odds in your favor. The winning starts at TrackMaster.com. The most celebrated and successful trotter of 2009, Muscle Hill, made his way to the Stallion Barn at Southwind Farm this past Friday. The handsome son of Muscle's Yankee was retired with 20 straight wins, including the Hamiltonian, Kentucky Futurity, two Breeders' Crowns, the Canadian Trotting Classic and World Trotting Derby, and set a single-season earnings mark of $2.45 million. I'm sure as many fans would have liked to see him race again, but now look forward to seeing his sons and daughters try to beat his records. Last week, our contest question asked for the name of the most recent pacer to win the first two legs of the pacing Triple Crown, only to lose the last. The answer was Shady Character, who fell short of a crown in 1998. Congratulations go out to Mary Lewis of Newport, New York, who has won one of our new long-sleeve USTA t-shirts for her efforts. Here's this week's challenge. Very few fillies have even entered the messenger since the Lady Maud was first raced in 1960. But that very same year, 1960, one filly sidestepped the Lady Maud to beat the boys in the messenger. Who is she? Send your name, address, and of course your answer to i at ustrotting.com. We'll pick a winner from among the correct entries and send our winner a copy of Harnessing Winners. 
Here's another reminder that as the stake season is winding down, Ion Harness Racing will go into hiatus for the winter months. Our last show of 2009 will be on November 10th. We'll be back with more weekly shows next May. In the interim, we'll bring you Eye on Harness Racing special reports, including coverage of the Horse of the Year announcement, USGA annual meeting, and whatever important story pops up between then and now. That's it for this week. Next week, of course, we'll focus our eye on harness racing at the Messenger Stakes Finals and other important stories from the world of harness racing. Remember, if you have any questions or comments about Ion Harness Racing, we'd love to hear them. Send them via email to i at ustrotting.com. I'm John Pavlock. On behalf of everyone on Ion Harness Racing, including my photographer, producer, Rich Johnson, thanks for watching.